So I want to pose a hypothetical question to you, the viewer. If given the choice between letting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of old people die, or letting the economy stagnate, potentially suffer for a little bit, which would you choose? I mean, to me, that's a really easy choice. Of course, we're saving lives. Human lives are much more valuable than the economy because the economy and money, these are all social phenomena. We made these things up. So without human beings to partake in an economy, without human beings to be able to spend money, these things have no value. So human life is the most valuable thing. But given how coronavirus isn't just going to impact our health and safety, but it will also have some pretty huge ramifications with regard to the economy, if we really want to flatten the curve, so to speak, we have to take action. And yes, the economy will suffer. Well, Republicans are basically now saying the quiet part out loud, and they're admitting that they would rather let lots and lots of old people die rather than basically allowing some companies to lose profits not even kidding. So in an interview with Tucker Carlson on Fox News, Lieutenant Governor of Texas Dan Patrick said this, and um, I still can't believe it. Take a look. And you know, Tucker, no one reached out to me and said, uh, as a senior citizen, uh, are you willing to take a chance on your survival in exchange for keeping the America that all America loves for your children and grandchildren? And if that's the exchange, I'm all in. Um, and that doesn't make me noble or brave or anything like that. I just think there are lots of grandparents out there in this country, like me, I have six grandchildren, that what we all care about and what we love more than anything are those children. And I want to you know, live smart and, uh, and, and see through this, but I don't want the whole country to be sacrificed uh, and, I, and that's what I see. I've talked to hundreds of people, Tucker, and just in the last week, and uh, making calls all the time. And, and everyone says pretty much the same thing, that we can't lose our whole country. We, we're having an economic collapse. I'm also a small businessman. I understand it. And I talk with business people all the time, Tucker. And, and I'm so, my, I'm just, my heart is lifted tonight by what I heard the president say, because we can do more than you know, one thing at a time. We can do two things. So, you know, my message is that um, let's get back to work. Let's get back to living. Let's be smart about it. Uh, and those of us who are 70 plus, we'll, we'll take care of ourselves, but don't sacrifice the country. Don't do that. Don't ruin so this great American So you're basically dream. saying that this disease could take your life, but that's not the scariest thing to you. There's something that would be worse than dying. Yeah. I can't believe he said that, and I have seen this clip multiple times in preparation for this segment, and I am still speechless. We all knew that capitalism was a cult, but the way that they're kind of explicitly admitting that this is one of those crazy suicidal cults, it's just, it's remarkable. Wow. And he said, look, I don't want to seem noble or brave by admitting that, you know, I'd rather die then let the economy tank a little bit. Um, first of all, it's not people like Dan Patrick who will die. It's the vulnerable people, the elderly people who have not much money to their name, the elderly people who are struggling to get by and uh, get groceries for themselves. That's the people who this is going to disproportionately impact. Because it's never the rich, it's never the elite class or the powerful, it's always the most vulnerable. Those at the tippy top will be fine, but it's your grandma, it's my grandma, it's the people who are already struggling, they're the ones who will be affected by this. And he says, look, given the choice between taking a chance on my survival or having us be the same America for my children and grandchildren, I'm going to opt for, you know, keeping things as is. I'd rather die than... Uh, have these CEOs of large multinational corporations take a little bit of a hit. I mean, this logic is absolutely insane. And anyone who is a capitalist after we make it through this pandemic needs to wake the fuck up. Because this is really showing just how cruel and ruthless 
our economic system is, where we are literally valuing a made-up economic system that we created over our own well-being and health. Is that not maddening? What are we doing? Yes, the economy will likely suffer if we truly do practice very disciplined social distancing for a while, but there are things that you can do, policies you can enact to ameliorate that, right? You can make sure that workers have enough money, because if we don't have money, then we can't stimulate the economy. The economy kind of needs us to have a little bit of purchasing power if you want it to function properly. But I mean, there are steps that you can take. Now, we saw Republicans float ways to help Americans, and I made a video last week where they were kind of sounding like Bernie Sanders. Tom Cotton kind of sounded a little bit like Bernie Sanders, because during a pandemic, everyone sounds like a socialist, because that's the only thing that works. You can't let the free market do its thing during a global pandemic. You need to directly put money in the hands of workers and not these large multinational corporations because if you bail out the airline and casino industries but people don't have money to put it back into the economy to spend money at these casinos or airline industries, what's the point of it? If you want capitalism to function, people have to have money to stimulate the economy. Now, I thought that capitalists realized that, but um, apparently they don't. And this is really showing that people in this country, our leaders, capitalists, they literally are willing to not just let people die in order to avoid any type of economic ramifications that may you know, come to fruition with this virus. They're admitting it. They're telling you how your life is not valuable. If you are... A Republican voter and you're old, I mean, they're telling you, they're admitting now that your life doesn't mean anything to them. The GOP is willing to kill off their own voting base just to make sure that their corporate donors don't lose any profits. How can you continue voting for this party? This party is psychopathic. This is a death cult. That's what this is. This is a psychopathic death cult. How can you continue to support them? Is xenophobia and racism really that important? Because they're telling you, I don't care if you die. The dude wants old people to die just to make sure the economy doesn't suffer at all. And Trump has the same line of thinking now. I'm just kind of taken aback by this because it's not like this is surprising to me. It's just what's surprising, I think, is the fact that they're admitting this. Like, I never expected them to just openly admit, of course, we value, you know, profit over the lives of people. I never thought that they would admit this. But here we are, and yet there's still going to be millions of people in this country who proudly identify as capitalist when they see exactly what the system does and what it's doing during a time of crisis. Like, everyone should abandon capitalism. Nobody should be a capitalist after COVID-19. And you already shouldn't have been a capitalist if you've been working 9 to 5 and can barely pay the bills. But nonetheless, I mean, everything is laid out to bear here. You see it. You see it firsthand firsthand. What's more valuable? It's not your life. It's profits.